So medical school is always seen as a very traditionally academic subject to take, and it definitely is. But I think because of this reputation, people also get the impression that most people can't go into medical school. And while I think it takes a certain person to be a medic and to be a medical student, I don't necessarily think that medical school is beyond the reach of most people. So in recent years, medical schools have caught on to this, and to increase representation in the medical community and within medical schools, they have started taking more students from disadvantaged backgrounds or unconventional educational backgrounds. A side product to this is that it's now a lot easier for adults with unconventional educational backgrounds to enter medicine through what's called an access course, which is a nice month level three qualification. So this provides a lot of opportunities for people, um, like myself for instance, and I want today's video to be more about, you know, how you can achieve this yourself. And while I haven't actually gotten into medical school yet, um, I'm well on my way to going on my access course, um, so hopefully this time next year I will be close to entering medical school. And I kind of want to show people what is involved in getting that far and what is involved in actually becoming a medical student as an adult without any you know, former qualifications, basically. So the first thing I want to talk about is the prerequisites for getting into medical school as an adult without any prior qualifications. The journey looks a bit different for adults than it does for school kids, for instance, because school kids have quite a traditional path. You know, you, you get your A's and A stars, your GCSEs, you do the same for A levels, you get your UCAT, and then you apply for medical school. It's a slightly different matter with adults. While it's a similar concept, there are quite a few nuanced changes that need to be paid attention to. But before we talk about those, I need to talk about study techniques. The reason for this is because, obviously, if you're an adult applicant for medicine and you don't have a necessarily, you know, traditionally academic background, so you, you haven't had your A-levels before, you've never gone to uni and all that sort of stuff. It stands to reason that you probably haven't learnt effective learning techniques before. I mean, I hadn't when I started this out. This is by far the most important thing you can do when switching your career to, to medicine as an adult. You first must learn effective studying techniques. You need to make sure that you have that you know how your brain works, that you know how you learn things well. And we'll go into this in a little bit more detail later on to the video, but that's one thing that you really need to keep, keep in mind for the rest of your journey at this point. So the next thing, of course, is the appropriate GCSEs. As an adult applicant to medicine, you will need two GCSEs if you go the access course route, which will be GCSE English and GCSE Maths. Now, these both need to be at at least a grade six. Um, I don't think they're actually too fussy. If they're access applicants, they don't tend to be too fussy about how high those grades are because I don't think medical schools tend to um, sort of, you know, triage GCSEs with their uh, applicants, so I think you'll actually be okay with just the six. Uh, I think it's just more of a, a tick box than anything else. So the next thing, which kind of shocks quite a few people, because a lot of people think you do the access course first, but you don't. The next thing you do is the UCAT. So you can do the UCAT during your access course, but due to the intensity of the access course, you want to do the UCAT first, because that can come before the access course and you can get all of that done, so you know when you apply in November, you know, you'll have a score to apply with rather than sort of like doing it just before the applications process. The next step, of course, is the access course. The access course is a nine month level three qualification and you can take either access to science or access to medicine. Preferably access to medicine because most medical schools are actually quite fussy if they do accept access applicants at all about accepting only access to medicine courses. Once you've completed this course, so it will start in the September, you'll apply, I think, in the November. So after you've started your access course in September, you will then finish it around July time, I think it is. And then obviously the next year you'll be entering into medical school. So of course, the next step is then March, which is where they will calculate all the UCAT scores and then, you know, think about how all those applicants did in their interviews. And then they will use those to inform who they give offers to for medical school. So that's a brief explanation of how the process goes. So going into a little bit more detail, I think we should really reiterate over the studying techniques part. So as I mentioned earlier, studying techniques are absolutely crucial, especially for mature applicants um, who don't have a typical background, because a lot of us don't actually know how learning works. I didn't, you know, and I had very ineffective learning techniques. And it is very, very important, especially during the first stages of your process of like coming into medical school that you actually get all these techniques down as soon as possible. So for me, I was doing that during my GCSEs because it was a good platform to kind of like experiment with what worked, what didn't. And picking good learning techniques is more or less about working smarter and not harder. You don't want to put in hours and hours and hours every single day doing something that's very ineffective. That will completely kill you. It will burn you out. 
So you need to make sure you've got an effective set of learning techniques such as active recall, spaced repetition, the Pomodoro technique, and of course things like flashcards and Anki, Quizlet, all that good stuff. And then of course there's one that everyone also tends to forget when they talk about learning techniques, because it isn't really a learning technique, it's more of a mindset, but it's very important because I think these learning techniques work best when you have this mindset, which is basically the growth mindset. So there are two camps of people. You have the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. People with a fixed mindset believe that intelligence is fixed and cannot be cultivated. And people with the growth mindset believe that intelligence is something that you can gain and proficiency in a particular you know, academic subject is something that you, know, you can learn and that you can eventually build up and excel at. So the growth mindset is very important to cultivate along your journey. Um, and I'd make sure that you're doing everything you can to kind of like undo those bad habits of a fixed mindset that can end up holding you back. So the next thing you may need um, you know, taking those learning techniques into account will be your GCSEs. This isn't necessarily 100% compulsory. For instance, if you did well in your GCSEs at school, you may not need them. Some medical schools are actually okay with just taking your previous academic record from school. However, some are not, so you might need to retake them. So you need at least a B in English and Maths. This can be a little bit difficult because as an adult, again, the education system works quite differently um, to how it did at school. So for instance, Adults don't necessarily have access to the higher courses. And what that means is that maths, for instance, is split up into two sections. You have your higher exam and you have your foundation exam. The problem with this is that most colleges only teach foundational um, mathematics, which means that you can't actually get a grade higher than a C or a 5. That poses a problem because that means nine times out of ten, you're probably going to teach yourself the higher content. Now, of course, you can get your own tutor in, you know, math tutors for GCSEs and A-levels will probably happily teach you um, as an adult, um, as I had myself for a couple of weeks to clear up a few misunderstandings in mathematics. And I definitely recommend that because it can be very difficult to do that on your own. The other problem with GCSEs as an adult is the lack of subjects. So you only need two GCSEs, which, is, which are English and maths, but sometimes it is kind of nice to get a feel for science again. And I would recommend if your college does a science GCC to give it a go just to get you you know familiar with science again and to again test your you know effective learning techniques because it's a good way to sort of test what works and what doesn't so that you don't end up doing that in the middle of an access course which is already very intense. So the next thing you'll need is the UCAT. Now after your GCCs the first thing I recommend that everyone does is study for their UCAT because obviously you're going to be taking your UCAT and then you're going to go into access to medicine. A lot of people recommend six weeks. I'd recommend eight weeks if you can make if you can do it because you need the highest score possible as an access applicant to give you the most amount of choices possible. Now in the UK there are quite a few medical schools that accept access applicants, but your options are quite limited if you get a low score in the UCAT. As far as I'm aware at this point in time, the only schools that accept a score lower than 650 are Keele Medical School and Aberdeen. That isn't a great selection of choices. They're both very good medical schools, but that, those might be quite limiting options for you if you you live in a you know other part of the country where you can't access those places easily. So to anyone who's unaware of what the UCAT is, it's basically just a glorified IQ test. What it's about is it's basically split into several sections. You have your verbal reasoning, your quantitative reasoning, your abstract reasoning, and your situational judgment test. So those are all put together and they each each section has a score and they're all combined and then averaged out through the mean average. And you come out with a score between, I think it's 500 and 900 as far as I'm aware. And that gives you a score that will dictate where you can go to medical school. An average score is considered around 650. That's a pretty decent run of the mill score. And you can get into a, a fairly decent chunk of medical schools with that score. However, a really good score would be considered around 700 and higher, uh, and an amazing score would probably be about 900 or 800 or whatever it is. You can get by just fine with around 650, but I would recommend scoring around 670 if you can help it, because if you can get a 670 in your UCAT, then there are quite a few university options that are open to you that have a slightly low grade boundary with the access course in turn. Definitely aim high with the UCAT. The lowest cutoff though in the UK, as far as I'm aware at this point in time, is Keele Medical School, which has a cutoff for 570, which is a very, very low score. So even if you do 
um, fail or do very badly in the UCAP, it's not necessarily over. You can actually, you know, apply uh, for medical school if you get at least 570. So next we have access to medicine. Now I want to note here, I'm not an access to medicine student just yet. That course begins in September and I haven't even started revising for it yet. So this is just speculation. So with that being said, there's a few things to note and consider when you're picking an access course. So you can apply to medicine with two types of access courses. You can do access to medicine or access to science. Access to science is considerably more popular and considerably easier to find than access to medicine. Access to medicine is in quite a scarce supply. You know, you can't find it that easily at colleges. For instance, I'm having to move away from my home to actually take an access to medicine course because the access to medicine course is definitely the best one to pick if you can help it because more schools accept access to medicine than accept access to science. Having said that, you should definitely speak to any university that you're interested in applying to and just confirm that they will only accept access to medicine because it might be that they will consider accepting access to science, for instance. So one thing to note about access to medicine is that, and it's some pretty good news actually, is that they've actually changed how the course works. So for instance, I think it's the Medical Schools Council has actually worked with the QAA, which is the um, the board that basically certifies that the qualifications follow a standard. And what's happened there is that they've managed to create a standard for the Access to Medicine course. So they actually have a standard curriculum now, which is the same across the board from what I can make out. And it's great. You can actually sort of see a very rough and basic outline of how the course goes, which again, I will include in a link in the description. That's very helpful for figuring out how to prepare for the access course before you start, which I definitely recommend that everyone does. So in the two weeks before the access course starts, I recommend that everyone would just, you know, look through an A-level biology and chemistry book and just sort of scratch up on all the topics that are, you know, covered in the the syllabus basically, which should be available on that list somewhere. You know, you have a basic outline of what needs to be covered. So just get a rough idea of how everything goes, just so you're a little bit ahead of the classes. So that so that way then you don't get crushed by the intensity of the course. And then of course that brings me on to the next subject about access to medicine, which is of course its intensity. Access courses are very intense by nature because essentially what they are is A-levels crushed into nine months. So obviously A-levels take two years generally and access courses take nine. It's more or less the same content but you're crushing it into nine months, which is a lot of work to do. It's definitely doable, but this is why I put so much emphasis earlier on study techniques. I've spoken to quite a few people who have taken access courses. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find anyone who has studied access to medicine just yet, but from what I've been able to make out, on average, people have to study three to four hours a day to make this possible, to, to get all the right credits and to do well on this course. So I'd recommend deploying the Pomodoro technique for this. Um, I've had a great amount of success studying three hours a day during my GCSEs using the Pomodoro technique. So I think that would be a very good way of tackling those studying hours for this course. So the next thing you need to think about, of course, um, are your grades. So basically your access course is split up into modules and they all have credits. There are 45 credits available at level three, along with others at level two and level one, depending on the course. And basically what you really want to focus on are your level three credits. So level three credits, um, you have 45 of them and they're split up into three categories. You have your merits, your passes and your distinctions. Not in that order, I messed up the order. Basically what you want to aim for, to be honest, with most, most, most medical schools, you really want to aim for 45 credits at distinction. So essentially by the time you've completed the course, that will be equivalent to a, a, a star as far as I'm aware. It depends on the medical school, though, because some of them actually do make draw equivalents between it. Uh, and I, I read on one medical school's website that 45 credits of distinction is roughly equivalent to A, A star. So, but take that with a pinch of salt. I'm not too sure how accurate that is. So that is the grade system for access courses. But this is why I always recommend preparing for this course in advance and just really getting to know how all the little pieces fit together so that you're not trying to figure that out on the fly while trying to achieve a distinction in your current module. It's just, you know, it'll be a nightmare basically to do that. So one point I really want to touch on here is the type of course you're taking. So it's always very important to make sure that your college is QAA approved for the access course. So um, you can actually usually find the certification at the bottom of the page for the course. Um, it should be a QAA approved course. If it's not, then it's basically not regulated, which means that the curriculum isn't standardized 
And to be honest, I don't think many medical schools will be interested in accepting you if you haven't got a QAA course. So make absolutely sure that the course is QAA approved. There are other boards, I think, um, so also look into that too. But it should be QAA approved by standard because that's the ones that most of the medical schools tend to go for, as far as I'm aware. And then there's also another way of doing an access course, which is through distance learning. So you can actually take access to medicine online. Now again, I really emphasize how careful you must be doing this. I don't want to endorse any online um, colleges for this because there are a lot of scams out there for distance learning at level three. And you have to be very, very careful and make sure that if you do take a distance learning course, that you check with the medical schools that you're interested in applying with to make sure that they will accept that course. Because some medical schools are quite open-minded about accepting distance learning courses. For instance, Keele Medical School will accept students from the distance learning center, I think it is, which is great, but then other medical schools are gonna be substantially more cautious about doing that. Now, I think this will change moving forward, but at least for now, medical schools are still quite touchy about distance learning. So I've talked to quite a few about this, Bristol being one of them, and they said that they would consider me if I took a distance learning course, but they couldn't guarantee anything because of the lack of practical experience. So, you, you know, you, because you're not, you're not able to sort of get access to a lab with a distance learning course, you're not able to, you know, show that you can actually, you know, know your way around a lab and do all the practical elements of the courses that is required of you. And that is a big problem for a lot of medical schools. Now, like I say, this could change moving forward as the education system changes in the coming years, but at least for now, that is a problem. And it's worth considering if you're taking an online course, because if you take an online course, you're still limiting your options. And as far as I'm aware, really at this moment in time, there are only two medical schools in the whole of the UK that actually explicitly state that they're fine with accepting distance learners. So that is pretty much all the advice I have to give at this point. Um, of course, there is the applications process, but that's pretty much the same process um, for A-level students as it is for access course students. So I don't really want to reinvent the wheel here. Um, Ali Abdol is a really good YouTube channel for that. There's some good medical school interview videos there, uh, along with a few other medical school channels such as Medic Mind. So have a browse around, see what suits you, and definitely touch up on your you know, interview technique because that is also a very very important part of the applications process. So that's about it. I'm hoping to make some more content surrounding this soon, so about GCCs and the access course itself. But for now, thank you for watching and see you soon.